Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mexico's president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, says the people coming into the U.S. right now see Biden, President Biden, as the migrant president. Does the White House take that as a compliment? Migrant, give me a little more context. Well, he said uh, they see him as the migrant president, and so many feel, uh, so many feel they're going to reach the United States. We need to work together to regulate the flow because this business can't be tackled from one day to the next. Well, first, it's Mexico will have to be is an important partner in ensuring we're addressing uh, the flow of migrants from uh, Central America uh, through Mexico and uh, many to the border of the United States. Uh, we have conveyed uh, privately and publicly as well that the majority of people who come to our border will be turned away. Uh, we certainly also recognize that because the president and our administration has made a decision that the way to humanely approach immigration is to allow for, um, you know, uh, for unaccompanied minors to come and be treated with humanity and, and be, uh, be uh, in, in, in safe uh, place uh, while we're considering, uh, while we're trying to get them into new home, into homes and sponsored homes, that, uh, that some more may have come to our border. And there have been, of course, a, a, a large flow of children across the border. We recognize that, but we, that is that we made a policy decision because we felt it was the humane approach. But the facts are the vast, vast majority of people who come to our border are turned away, and the statistics bear that out. Okay, and then in terms of keeping COVID out of the country, does the White House think that it's a problem that travelers have to show a negative COVID test, proof of a negative COVID test when they fly into the U.S. from any foreign country, but travelers don't need to show anything like that when they just walk across the border as long as they don't go to a port of entry? Well, I think there's been a lot of confusion about what's been happening at the border um, as it relates to um, people who are coming across um, and what happens uh, when they come across. And I know Governor Abbott down in Texas has uh, has uh, expressed some of his concerns, and many of those have not been based in facts. So let me go through a few of those because I know we're all interested in facts around here. Uh, one. Uh, Governor Abbott has referred to what's happening at the border as open borders, as us having an open borders policy. That is absolutely incorrect. Uh, the border is not open. The vast majority of individuals uh, apprehended or encountered at the border continue to be denied entry and are returned under, under Title 42, as we've already mentioned. Uh, also, he has suggested that uh, we are not vaccinating CBP officers. Uh, again, we like to deal with facts around here. There's no higher priority than the health and safety of our federal workforce. And the Department of Homeland Security and CBP has been clear that uh, currently more than 64,000 frontline DHS employees, including members of U.S. Border Patrol, have received a vaccination. Uh, so that's another just point just to provide full clarity. Uh, the other piece is, is the question about um, the testing of migrants uh, at the border uh, or testing of migrants as, as they are coming across. And we have DHS and FEMA have stepped in and worked with local mayors, NGOs, and public health officials in Texas to implement a system to provide COVID-19 testing and, as needed, isolation and quarantine for families released from border patrol facilities. Their proposal and agreement would cover 100% of the expense of the testing, isolation, and quarantine. But Governor Abbott has decided to reject that. So there are a number, there's a lot of confusion about these issues, and I just wanted to provide a little point of clarity here. But not asking about Governor Abbott, asking about President Biden in charge of the federal government. Why are the feds relying on NGOs to administer these tests? We've talked to people down at the border who say, that migrants are only tested if they show symptoms, that seems like a loophole. That, that's not an accurate depiction. Uh, there is, uh, there's an important role that NGOs, that local mayors, that local officials play in, uh, in, in working together. And this is a proposal that was worked with DHS, with um, FEMA and others to help address and ensure that people are tested. Uh, and Governor Abbott, I, I raised that simply because he had raised a concern about that. And I wanted to be clear that we've put forward a proposal. So I think the question is, why is he standing in the way of local communities getting the funding and support they need to help with testing, isolation, and quarantining efforts? But again, just a question about Biden administration policy. Mm -hmm. COVID is COVID. COVID at the Dulles Airport Customs is the same as COVID in a border town. Uh, so I'm curious why it is that it's enforced for people flying in from other countries, 
but it is not a requirement by the federal government to test or to prove a negative test anywhere along the border except at a port of entry. Well, again, I can just describe to you what our policies are. If there's more to convey to you, I am happy to do that. And then just one quick one on uh, green jobs. You guys have talked a lot about tackling the, cr the climate crisis while creating good paying jobs. Now the president of the Texas AFL-CIO has come out to say someone working in a refinery leaving to go install solar panels, they're probably going to take a 75% cut in pay. Is that something the administration is aware of? I'm not sure which jobs are being compared there. Here, here's what I can convey to you. Uh, the president is committed during his presidency to uh, invest in, uh, work with labor unions, with climate activists, with a range of, with the industry to invest in good paying, clean energy jobs. And he believes that unions uh, have an incredibly important role to play in ensuring that those are um, high paying jobs, that those treat the people who are in them with the respect and value that they deserve through collective bargaining rights and a range of the benefits of uh, union organizing, uh, being a part of a union. Obviously, that requires um, additional work and investment by the federal government working with Congress to invest in what we see as industries of the future. Oil and gas jobs are uh, not going away. Uh, there are uh, many industries that are, of course, continuing to uh, function. The outgoing administration flooded the oil markets with cheap federal leases. This will not affect oil and gas production or jobs for years to come. But what our objective is, is to invest in what we see as the industries of the future, where we feel is where the jobs are going to be moving forward. And the president looks forward to continuing, c delivering on his commitment to doing exactly that. High paying, good paying, but equal paying? Uh, high paying, good paying jobs. I, I, I think we're equal comparing a, a little bit of, I'm, I'm not sure what specific jobs you're comparing. What I'm conveying is the, the commitment to ensuring that jobs in the uh, clean energy industry will be high paying, union jobs, that's what the president's objective and commitment is to.